Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready. All right. Good afternoon and thank you to this local briefing on COVID-19 and our community's response effort. Joining me again is interpreter Francis Beauravage. And thank you so much, Francis, for your services. And thank you to the media and to all of our residents who are tuning in to learn more about how you can protect yourself, your loved ones, and our community during this pandemic. We want to remind everyone to please visit our website, covid19.lincoln.ne.gov, where you can continue to access additional updates and resources to help navigate these times. The website includes a data dashboard that is updated every day around the time of this briefing. Here in Lincoln today, we have had an additional 38 individuals test positive for COVID-19. The total number, number of lab-confirmed cases in Lincoln now stands at 1,005. Our total recoveries identified to date remains at 134 individuals. Again, because the number is um, the number is unchanged on some days because an individual is not deemed to have been recovered from the virus until 28 days after they test positive for COVID-19 and have been confirmed to be symptom free. More detailed demographic information from our case investigations can be found on our website where you will also find our COVID-19 risk dial, a tool that has been in place for almost two weeks and which helps our community know what actions and behaviors each of us may take in order to protect ourselves and others. The COVID-19 risk dial provides a visual color-coded depiction of local conditions that we are experiencing here in Lincoln and Lancaster County, in essence, a forecast of local risk. Red represents the highest risk of COVID-19 spread and green represents the lowest. For each color of risk, our public health team provides specific recommendations for physical distancing, face coverings, hand washing, illness monitoring, and disinfection, both for when we are outside our homes at work or in public and when we are at home. Also associated with the dial's risk levels are specific recommendations for businesses on how to operate safely in light of local health conditions. All of these recommendations have been informed by guidance from national resources developed uh, by Johns Hopkins University, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the White House Coronavirus Task Force. We update the dial each Friday based on local data to estimate how high the risk of spread of COVID-19 is in our community. Here to share more on the Health Department's update to the dial, as well as on the latest case investigations, is Health Director Pat Lopez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, at this time, the risk of the spread of COVID-19 in our community remains high. So the COVID dial will stay in orange. However, because most of our indicators have remained or improved slightly, the health department has moved the dial slightly to the left so that it now is now in the lower section of orange. I want to emphasize that while the dial has moved, risk of spreading the virus remains high. The health department continues to use local and regional data from the past few weeks to determine how high the risk of spread of COVID-19 is in our community. Here is an update on the main factors. First, we look at the number of lab confirmed COVID-19 cases reported in Lancaster County. We also look at the trend, whether it's increasing or decreasing. The number has varied a great deal from day to day, partly because of de delays in receiving lab reports. However, over a seven day period, we've had an average of 35 new cases reported daily. We have no new Lancaster case, County cases to report today connected to the Smithfield plant in Crete. The total number of cases remains at 292. We also have new, no new cases connected to our other local plants, the Smart Chicken plant in Waverly has 20 cases so far, and the number of positive cases related to the Smithfield plant in re Lincoln remains at 20 as well. This indicator has decreased slightly, but remains fairly stable. That decrease has come despite significant increases in testing, so we consider this indicator stable to slightly improving. Another factor we con consider is the positivity rate, the overall percentage of tests that are positive. After increasing fairly rapidly for six weeks, it has dropped slowly each of the last three weeks. 
The positivity rate, to remind everyone, is based on the overall number of tests entirely and the number of positive cases. This week, the rate went from a high of 9.8 on Monday, the 11th down to about 8.2% as of today. As a comparison, the state rate is about 15.2% and the national rate is currently 15.7. This indicator is also considered to be slightly de decreasing or improving. The overall positivity rate uh, is not indicated on our slide, but the weekly positivity rate is on the dashboard. The third major factor is our testing capacity, and this has continued to improve. Over 5,000 Lincoln and Lancaster County residents have had tests completed in the past two weeks. We are on pace to complete over 3,000 tests this week as well. In addition to Bryant's and CHI Health St. Elizabeth's drive through testing site, Test Nebraska is operating that as well. We have received over 1,500 test results from Test Nebraska and Lincoln residents so far. This indicator has shown continued improvement. Yesterday, Brian Health and CHI Health St. Elizabeth reported more testing uh, with just 204 tests completed. The sites are able to conduct 300 to 500 tests per day, so tests are available for those who show symptoms of COVID-19. To get started is simple. You can fill out a risk assessment at chihealth.com or bryanhealth.com or Test Nebraska. If you are symptomatic, please seek testing. Fourth, we consider the capacity of the health department to conduct investigations and contact tracing. We have added additional staff and now have 34 working in this capacity. We also have the ability to add more if needed, so this indicator is considered flat. Capacity has kept pace with demand. The fifth major factor we consider is the capacity of our hospitals and our entire healthcare system. To de determine this, we look at the total number of patients hospitalized, um, the number that are COVID-19 positive, uh, the need for personal protective equipment, and the availability of ICU beds. We have seen a leveling of COVID-19 patients in our hospitals over the past two weeks. This week has stayed fairly steady with around 40 positive patients being hospitalized and 10 to 12 using ventilators. Today, our local hospitals report 42 COVID-19 patients. That includes 24 from Lancaster County and 18 from other parts of the state. 12 patients are on ventilators. That includes seven from Lancaster County and five from other parts of the state. This indicator is also holding steady and considered flat. We have cautiously moved the dial to the lowest orange level, as we want everyone to understand that this progress can be lost if we go down and let down our guard. <clears throat> you might be one of those asymptomatic people in the community who doesn't know they are carrying the virus. In other words, your personal actions impact our entire community. It is our sincere belief that the Lincoln and Lancaster County residents are ready to meet the challenge of holding this line and continuing to make progress in the battle against COVID-19. So as we continue forward this week at a low orange level, community guidance includes the following recommendation. Stay at home as much as possible. Stay at least six feet away from others. Wear a face covering every time you're outside your home and around others. Continue to wash your hands frequently and disinfect highly touched surfaces. And specifically for adults over age 65 or anyone with underlying health conditions and other populations at high risk from COVID-19, stay at home as much as possible. Rely on help for, for needs outside the home, groceries and medications, et cetera, from others. Distance from others working outside of the home to keep safe. Thank you, Director Lopez. We all have a role to play in keeping that dial moving in a safer direction. Even as our restrictions ease somewhat with the new directed health measure taking effect June 1st, we must remember that the risk of COVID-19 spread remains high. 
As Dr. Anthony Fauci shared with me and other mayors on a video conference call yesterday, every city will need to be prepared for upticks in infections as restrictions ease. Uh, rather than let ourselves be discouraged by this likelihood, he reaffirmed the importance of cities having a strong testing program in place, supported by ample contact tracing capability that will prevent any blip in infections becoming a resurgence. Our local team is committed to building these capacities and doing everything we can to prevent such a resurgence. But we can't do it alone. Recognizing that the danger of a resurgence is real, doc Dr. Fauci underscored that our community's success in preventing the spread of COVID-19 will be directly linked to the care with which all of our community members faithfully wash our hands, wear a face mask, and keep six feet of physical distance between ourselves and others. We encourage everyone to commit to these practices and to exercise caution this holiday weekend and in the coming weeks. We are travelers together in this pandemic and our ability to safely navigate the road ahead depends upon all of us doing a lot of defensive driving. Moving on to city operations, we have a couple of updates today and both are good news. While our swimming pools will not be opening for the traditional Memorial Day weekend, we are happy to announce that five public outdoor pools will be opening for the season on Monday, June 15th. The pools that will be open this summer are Arnold Pool in Air Park, Ballard Pool in Northeast Lincoln, Belmont Pool in Northwest Lincoln, Irvingdale Pool in South Lincoln, and Woods Pool in Central Lincoln. Open swim periods will be 90 minutes long and organized in three daily sessions at 12 noon, 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. High touch surfaces around the pool and in the bathhouse will be disinfected between these sessions. When residents arrive at pools to swim, we will take their temperatures and collect names and phone numbers in the event that contact tracing is needed at some point in the future. Swimmers will be expected to stay at least six feet away from others and to wear face coverings while waiting to check in. Pool patrons will be required to shower in their swimsuits with soap before entering the pool deck. Evening family swim sessions will be available at each pool on a weekly basis. Learn to swim programs may be offered in July. And evening water fitness classes will be offered again this summer. And the, time, the times and location for that will be available soon. For local swim and dive clubs, the times available for practice and conditioning posted in the mornings at Woods Pool. Parks and Recreation are reviewing USA Swimming and Diving recommendations to incorporate them into local and state guidelines for operating. Pools will not be available for private rental events this year. The decision on whether to open the pools has been, of course, a difficult one. We considered public safety, budget constraints, and how closing all of the pools would impact our children and families throughout our community. I want to thank the Parks and Recreation Department for carefully looking at the issue from all of these angles and for coming up with a workable solution. Parks and Recreation Director Lynn Johnson is available for any questions that you should have after this briefing. Next, we have some news about our city team. Throughout this pandemic, we have referred to the work of our unified command, led by our health department and supported by Lincoln Transportation and Utilities, the Lincoln Police Department, and Lincoln Fire and Rescue. The leadership provided by the directors of these departments, along with their talented and dedicated staff, have served our community well in this unprecedented time. I'm so honored to have them as a part of my cabinet, and I'm truly grateful for their service to our city. Shortly before the arrival of COVID-19 in our community, our fire chief, Mike Despain, retired after a 35-year career in the fire service. At that time, Assistant Fire Chief Pat Borer stepped into the role as the interim leader of the fire department while the search process for the next permanent fire chief was underway. As the pandemic progressed, it did become clear that a robust community process to recommend a candidate for the fire chief position was not going to be possible, and so we suspended that search. Today, I am pleased to announce that Chief Despain has agreed to return to Lincoln Fire and Rescue on a contract basis to serve as our interim chief beginning July 15th. Mike is a highly sought after consultant for departments across the nation. In fact, since he ended his work as our chief, he has been serving as an interim role as the chief of Rockland, California's fire department. I appreciate his willingness to serve the city of Lincoln while we determine the best way to execute a new search process that allows for greater community participation and input during the pandemic. We have not yet determined what that process will look like, 
but we plan to design the process in the near future in the hope that we can select a permanent chief by the end of this year. I'm pleased that Mike could join us here in person today, and I invite him to the podium now to say a few words. Welcome back. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Well, uh, it's an honor to be back here, or at least uh, potentially coming back. And just like uh, everyone else in the entire world, uh, my life and my family's life in February looks much different now in, in April, May, and June. Uh, due to the virus. And so some of our plans for travel and some of those things you typically try and plan for retirement are obviously uh, going to be on hold. And so uh, since we are still here in the community, um, we watched some of the issues that were occurring. And in particular, the command team within LFR was es essentially devastated with the number of people that had to step over into the role to assist with incident command. And then also with my absence, it just left them a player short. And so at the end of the day, uh, they are going through a, a tough time trying to keep uh, keep the organization moving forward. So uh, I'll have some capacity come July and uh, when I'm able to come back into the community. And so uh, graciously, the mayor uh, offered uh, a chance to come back and just hold the fort for a little while till we have a chance to do a proper uh, recruitment for a permanent fire chief. So this is temporary. Um, but also uh, we're happy to spend some time back in home with LFR to uh, help during this process. So thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity, and we'll see you in July. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Pat Bohr will remain the interim chief until Mike arrives in July, and will then return to his position as our assistant fire chief. And I want to express my gratitude uh, for his critical work as a member of our unified command team. This certainly was not the role that he had signed up for, and his experience with the fire service and dedication to the city of Lincoln has been on clear display and is greatly appreciated. So I want to thank Pat and to thank again to Mike Despain. This weekend, we are celebrating the graduation of about 3,000 high school seniors in our community, including my daughter, Avelina. Our community has found so many ways to mark this achievement. Um, here's a picture received just this morning from my new friend Peschel, a third grader at Morley, who was inspired by the class of 2020 to make this sign as part of a school project earlier this week. His mother, Anne, wrote that their family wanted to honor the senior class's achievement, saying, quote, it is a major milestone and we celebrate with all the kids because we are all connected. Lincoln Public Schools has also come up with another way to, for our entire community to celebrate all of our graduate, graduates from public and private schools across Lincoln. This Sunday at exactly 8.20 p.m. or 2020 in military time, we encourage everyone to step outside their homes or open their windows and cheer and applaud our seniors. Uh, to support this amazing event, I have issued a proclamation and I'd like to share a portion of that. Um, Whereas our graduates uh, have coped with an unusual end to their high school career, they have learned important lessons that are not always taught in the classroom. Lessons about sacrifice, the power of community, and their own resiliency. Lessons that will serve them well in all future chapters of their lives. And whereas residents of Lincoln will go outside at 2020, 8.20 p.m. on Sunday, May 24th, to cheer the class of 2020 and to celebrate their academic and extracurricular accomplishments. Now, therefore, I, Lyrian Gaylor Baird, Mayor of the City of Lincoln, Nebraska, do hereby proclaim May 24th, 2020 as Celebrate Lincoln's Class of 2020 Day and urge all residents to participate in the citywide demonstration to show our pride in their accomplishments and our best wishes for their future success. And our creative and dedicated LPS Superintendent Steve Joel is here with us today, and I invite him up to the podium to say a few words about the class of 2020. Thank you, Mayor. Very, very much appreciated. You know, this is, uh, this is that time of the year where this weekend is traditionally a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, and we graduate about 3,000 high school students each year from LPS. And of course, as you stated, this has been uh, anything but a typical year, and these young people have put in a lot of time, a lot of dedication, a lot of sacrifice, and have overcome some, some really tough challenges. They're gonna be forever known as the pandemic class. 
Um, but we're still going to celebrate their accomplishment. So this proclamation is goes a long way toward acknowledging their good work, and I'm looking forward to participating at 820 on Sunday, and I hope that all of our seniors will step outside and be acknowledged. And then we're going to continue to work on July 26th to see what, uh, what in fact, we're going to be able to put together based on, on current conditions at that time. But know that on behalf of about 3,000 seniors, we very much appreciate this proclamation and we'll look forward to, uh, to doing it as, as best as we can and as safe a way as we can on Sunday at 8.20 p.m. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Stephen. As a class of 2020 parent, I can't express enough just how much it means that you came up with this idea for our graduates and not just for them, but for all of our families and friends. Uh, finally, Monday is Memorial Day, and it's a day of remembrance for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Our community normally marks this occasion with a moving ceremony at our Veterans Memorial Garden. To keep everyone safe, we are offering a pre-recorded program instead of that event in the garden. The ceremony will air on LNK TV on Monday, May 25th at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 7 p.m. That program will include a reading of the names of the Lancaster County veterans who have passed away over the last year. You can find more information on how to watch the program live and on demand at lincoln.ne.gov with the keyword LNK TV. We also want to mention that in lieu of community celebrations uh, statewide, the Nebraska Department of Veterans Affairs will present an all-day salute to veterans Monday, May 25th. NET Television will live stream the observance at the State Capitol Rotunda from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. More information is available at veterans.nebraska.gov. To observe Memorial Day safely, our health department recommends that we take extra precautions and make plans that allow us to mark the holiday without putting ourselves or others at risk during the pandemic. They ask that you participate with your own immediate family or household. If the rain doesn't interfere, you could get outside and enjoy the fresh air with a walk, a bike ride, a picnic or barbecue. You could pick a movie with a patriotic theme to watch at home. Keep social gatherings to a minimum, 10 people or fewer, and make sure those who are sick or who have symptoms stay home or away, stay away from others. Consider a virtual Memorial Day observance using a social networking video app or your smartphone with friends and family. And we also want to take a moment to acknowledge that Memorial Day is different than our other patriotic holidays. On this day, we turn our hearts and our thoughts specifically to those who never came home. America has a long tradition of honoring those heroes to make sure their sacrifice and the loss felt by their families is never forgotten. More than a million lives have been lost in combat through our brief history as a country, and we have them to thank for much of what we hold dear today, not the least of which are our freedoms. In America, we enjoy the freedom to speak our minds, to elect our leaders, to worship as we please, and to love whom we choose. These freedoms and many more came at a price paid over the years, paid on battlefields across the globe, and paid by those brave souls who took up arms to protect our country. The red poppy is considered the emblem of Memorial Day. It would spring from the ground after fierce fighting on European lines during World War I. It is a symbol of beauty in the midst of destruction. It's a symbol of what can come after so much is lost. In 1918, a poem was written about the flowers by Moina Michael. Her words are beautiful, and I'd like to share an excerpt of them with everyone today. And here they are. We cherish, too, the poppy red that grows on fields where valor led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies, but lends a luster to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead. And while we know that our words will not alter the grief of those who have lost a loved one, we do wish to say this. We are grateful, we remember, and we will live better lives to honor their service and sacrifice. We are surrounded now by a quiet enemy, one that requires sacrifices from everyone in our community. And when we think of those who have laid down their lives for us, our daily sacrifices to protect one another from harm are put into context. We can feel proud when we do our small part to protect the lives of those in our community, that we are honoring the precious gift of freedom given to us by those who fought and died for our country. 
And with that, I would close and offer time up for questions. Again, we have Lynn Johnson here on the Zoom call. We have Chief Despain in the room and Health Director Pat Lopez available as well. Hi, Mayor. This is Bill with 1011. I know there are a lot of pros and cons to opening pools this summer. I'm curious as to, to what was the tipping point? Well, of course, uh, we were thinking very much about health and safety, first and foremost, and discussions with our health department about an outdoor activity like this, um, looking at guidance um, and resources nationally and locally. Um, we believe that with constraints and limitations on access to the pools, that we could uh, undertake operating them in a limited way with safety precautions in place. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that we were thinking about equity as we looked at our summer operations. And for many, access to our public pools is the only access to swimming or swimming lessons that they may have. And we didn't want only children in membership-based membership organizations to have that kind of access. So that was also a factor in our thinking. Um, we also took into account cost, which is why we are not operating all of the public pools. To operate on such a limited basis uh, using our, re you know, res our resources, which are constrained and constrained in new ways this year, uh, we will just be doing the five pools, but we tried to make sure that we are serving as much of the geographical base of our community as possible. Um, and I would hand it over to Lynn if he wanted to offer any other insights uh, to you, Bill. Mayor, I think you covered it very well. And those were exactly the thoughts. We would need to make sure that we could do it safely, that we wanted to make sure there was equitable access throughout the community. And then as you said, there's a financial side of this and making sure that it was something that we could afford within, within the limited resources perhaps that are available at this time. I also had a talk with some the Belmont track scholars this week and, and while we were already moving in this direction, uh, I listened to a fourth grader tell me that they were sad about this summer, sad about not getting to do all the fun things that summer is supposed to entail. So thinking about our youth and their morale, of course, played a role as well. Any other questions? I have a question. Hi, Nick McConnell from the Journal Star. Um, Sorry, we were curious um, if there was a limit to the number of people who could be in the pool at once. Yes, the, the pools will be operating at a limited capacity. Lynn, can you speak to some of the details on um, how many people will be allowed into the pool facilities? I can absolutely do that, Mayor. Um, what we did was we looked at if we had people spaced six feet apart in the shallow water areas of the pool, and then we reduced that to, to 25% of that. We wanna make sure that um, people can socially distance while they're in the water and when they're out of the water as well. So the pools will be operating at a very limited capacity. Um, when people arrive at the pool, uh, we'll be obviously counting the number of people as they arrive, and then we'll post that we've achieved that capacity um, if we do at each one of those sessions. And that was part of the reason to divide the day up into three different open swim sessions so there'd be one at noon, one at two o'clock, one at four o'clock. So people would be able to arrive, they'd be able to swim and engage in water recreation for an hour and a half. And then we would close the pool, disinfect surfaces, and then reopen so that another group of people would be able to, to swim uh, later in the afternoon. Any other questions? The decision about hospital visitors is really based on the health systems themselves, and I think that's a very different situation when we talk about loosening restrictions. But I know that the hospitals are taking into consideration the number of positive patients they have and <clears throat> what else is happening in the healthcare environment. I know it's been very difficult for them. Uh, we've all seen that 
when families can't be together with a loved one uh, when they are critically ill. And I know that is something they are currently reviewing. So I, I don't want to speak for them, but I think it's important to remember that the hospital is a different type of uh, system than a restaurant or other uh, opportunities in the community. Any other questions? All right, with that, we thank you for tuning in. We hope you have a safe weekend, that you're able to enjoy the holiday weekend safely with your household, and we'll be back next week with another update. Take care.